Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be making the brand new Sydney ID wallet. Before we get started, you'll wanna head over to the website and download the supply list. This wallet is going to be made out of cork. You could use a lightweight vinyl or leather. This is not going to be compatible with any of your cotton fabrics or anything that frays because there are raw edges. So all of our pieces have raw edges. None of them are finished like the lining inside here in the zippered pocket. It's a very minimal hardware um, project. You'll just need a zipper. If you want, you can also add a little snap tab right here and I'll show you how to do that. And you can also add on a little swivel hook like I have here if you want to hook this to your belt loop or inside of your purse or whatever you would like. So you can very easily skip the hardware, just grab a small zipper and your cork. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wallet itself and then I'll show you all of the things that it will hold. So again, this is gonna be made out of cork, so all of my pieces here are from the same um, print. This takes a nine by 12, but you can very easily make it out of scraps. So on this side, we do have a clear um, window. This is a 16 gauge uh, vinyl that I have here, and we'll talk about that when we get into it. Back here, I would put my ID, and then behind it, there is another little pocket right here. Of course, up top, there is a zipper. Always need to have a place to put cash or change. And then back here are the credit card slots. So there's one slot right here and one right here. And then behind this unit is another pocket where you can put more credit cards, money, receipts, whatever you would like. So as far as the hardware is concerned, you do not need anything more than a zipper. On this one right here, I also added a little snap tab for my credit cards. Not necessary, but just something you can add on. It's a great way to play with your rivet setter if you have one. I would not suggest using a magnetic snap like the ones that we have done on the Daybreak. This is again done with a rivet setter, but we have in the kits included a magnetic snap. That sits a little bit further down, and so it's not really touching too many of the credit cards, so I felt a little bit more safe with doing that. This one being right on top of the cards, I didn't think that I should do a magnet. Again, that would be up to you. If you wanna do this little closure and add a button or a piece of Velcro or anything else, it's totally up to you, but you can skip that. I'll show you how to do it in the video, but you can see on this one I didn't. You can also choose to add a little swivel hook if you'd like, so you can hook this into your purse or onto your belt loop. It does fit nicely in a pocket, so it just depends on what style you want. So let's take a look at this one and I'll show you just how much stuff I have in here and I still have a little bit of room. Um, please don't yell at me for the credit cards. I don't have the pretty fancy fake uh, cardboard ones. I have blocked out my numbers. So before anybody gets upset with me, I've done my best here. So let's see how many cards I have. So in each of the pockets here, I have two. So there's four cards. Behind here, I have three more. On this side, I have my ID, of course. I'll take that out. And then back here, I have three more cards. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 credit cards and my ID with no issues. Also behind this little pocket here, so you have your pocket for your ID and then this pocket here, it does fit your vaccine card perfectly. It's the perfect size. Um, I'd like to say that I planned that. I did not, however, but it just happens to work really nicely. I'm not gonna take that one out. And inside here, I've got room for cash or change. So I have, you know, a nice supply of ones here. So you definitely have some room here. This is going to be a little bit more basic. It's not gonna hold quite as much as all of your larger wallets. But if I'm traveling and I just need my basics, I wanna just grab my ID. Um, I usually take one or two credit cards with me and some money. I have everything that I need here and I can slip it into my back pocket, my coat pocket, hook it onto something. So it's just a really nice, basic, everyday wallet. This one, again, I added the snap and the hook. For today's sample, I will be showing you how to do both of those, but you can very easily make it plain like the sunflower one right here. So let's go ahead and go through our supplies as well as the cutting instructions, and let's get started on your Sydney. So let's go ahead and talk about our supplies. I've already gone ahead and done my cutting and you'll want to go over to the website if you haven't already, download the um, supply list. So you're going to need a nine by 12 piece of cork. That's going to do all of your pieces here. You can also, again, use scraps and all of your pieces are listed for you. And if you would like to do this out of a directional um, print, you can do that. 
as you can see on the chevron that is directional and so i was able to match up everything um, one thing i will note if you have something directional not just like a chevron or a stripe but something that has a direct up and down like a flower or an animal um, it will be upright on one side and upside down on the other so i would probably avoid those prints for something like this, especially on your first try, I would stick with something like I have here, the blue marble that has no direction at all. So I didn't have to like really worry too much. So I do get asked that question a lot. So I just like to bring it up. So my first piece here is my A. This is going to be the base. This is where my zippered pocket will go as well as my other pockets. Those will get added on. This is four and a half inches across and eight inches high. My zipper is going to go right here in the center. I have B. B is for the front of the window pocket right here. So it's this piece in the front. This one back here is C. So my B piece is four and a half inches across by three and a quarter high. My C piece is four across by three high. It's a little bit smaller and I'll show you why that is when we get to it. I did a lot of things to eliminate bulk wherever I could so that this is a domestic machine um, friendly project. I also have my D piece right here. That's going to be the base of my credit card pocket. So it's this piece right here. I'll move that over. So it's this piece right here where the card pockets sit and it also creates this pocket. D is four inches across and two and three quarter inches tall. I have two E's. Those are gonna be for my credit card pockets right here. And my E's are three inches by two and three quarters. So the three is right here it's going to go actually across and the two and three quarter is the height i also have my zipper it is a four inch zipper as long as it's a nylon zipper or a plastic zipper that you can sew across that's all that matters so this was one of my scraps that i have from the zippers that we sell so you're going to want that as well does not have to be this purse style zipper you can use a regular plastic zipper this is just what i always have on hand and what i like to sew with you're also going to need a piece of clear plastic. This has the paper still on it, that's why it looks white, um, but it is clear plastic. This is 16 gauge, and this is four and a quarter by three inches. We do have this available on the website, and we also have kits available. This is everything that you would get in your kit. So we do have some optional things as well, so let's go ahead and talk about those. So let's talk about some of the optional pieces. If you would like to add a swivel hook or a um, snap to your wallet, you will need these pieces. So right here, I have two of my F pieces. That's going to make this little tab right here for the snap. So that is three quarters of an inch by three inches. You'll need two of those. You'll also need the snap itself. So I have here a 12 millimeter or 12 and a half millimeter, excuse me. I think it's 12 and a half. Um, ring snap this is a, a single cap so I have the cap part that will show on this and then I have the snap part on this side I am going to show you how to install that using my rivet setter I also have my ProMaster punch tool right here I'll show you how to do all that even though it is completely optional if you want to make this tab and use a different kind of closure you can do that as well and because i am using this style snap i also have a little scrap right here of cork it's just a tiny little piece i like to put that behind this piece right here because this is just a single layer of cork and i just want to make sure that this snap is not going to rip out i wouldn't want to ruin my wallet as soon as i start using it and that does have a pretty strong snap there so that's why i like to do that again we will get to that as we get further in and then we also have the swivel hook, again, totally optional. I just cut a half inch piece by three inches. That's how I got this size right here. You can make it shorter or longer if you like. And I cut my width at half inch because of my swivel hook, because that is a half inch inside. So those are some of your optional pieces um, and a rivet setter. Sorry if I already mentioned that, but you'll need that for this style right here. Other than that, some of your basic tools that you're going to need is obviously your ruler rotary cutter and your mat is gonna make this a lot easier to cut. You're gonna want some nice sharp scissors. I always have a few pairs around. And you're gonna want some marking tools depending on what um, cork you're using. So on a lighter color cork, I could mark with a regular pen. This has a black backing. So I have here um, this pen that I got from uh, So Whatever. 
or I'm sorry, from More Me Know, so whatever is her Facebook group. I have that, or you can use a chalk pencil because you're going to want to mark your pieces. Now, I do mark on the back of all of mine, and I'll show you here. Like, this is one of my credit card pockets, so I have marked. For the most part, you're not going to see any of those markings. Like, when I try to look in here, I'm not really seeing where I've marked anything. Maybe back here I might notice it, or maybe in here. If that bothers you, just, um, you know, clip a little tag on there, something that says it's A, B, C, um, or whatnot. I don't really worry too much. This one back here does have a... Um, a little uh, letter on the back, but I'm not super concerned. So it's totally up to you. As far as your machine is concerned, again, I did this on my domestic. That's what I'm gonna be sewing on today. So you're just gonna set it up the way you would sew any of your court projects. You're going to wanna match your top and bobbin thread because when you're finishing up around the edges, you're gonna be sewing both sides at once. And you do have some top stitching here. It's not really gonna to show too much, but you might as well have your thread ready to go. I used an aqua on here and I made sure to match the top and the bobbin. That way it didn't matter what side I was sewing on. You're not going to need an iron today. How awesome is that? I did not use an iron for this entire project. Um, I do iron cork, yes, I have mentioned that several times. So unless my cork was rolled up really tightly or had some creases, I didn't need an iron. I don't need any fabric or interfacing. I don't really need too much um, to get started. And as far as the plastic ID window is concerned, I'm gonna show you a trick for sewing. So I didn't even need a Teflon foot. I used my quarter inch foot for I think one stitch and then I used my blind hem foot, which I use all the time. That's this foot right here, the blind hem. This is my Janome, so it's the G foot. And I use this to do my eighth of an inch and most of this is done with eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch stitching. So I actually didn't even really need to change my feet. And if I wanted to be super duper lazy, I can use this in the one place that I need a quarter of an inch and just make do. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's mark some of our pieces and make this wallet. It is a super, super quick project. And I don't think that you're going to be able to make just one. So to start, I'm going to add my zippered pocket. I'm going to keep the finished wallet nearby so I can show you as we're going what we're doing. So this part right here, which will end up at the top of the wallet, that's what we're going to do first. I apologize. I did forget to mention in the supplies, but it is on your supply list. You're going to want some quarter inch um, double stick tape. This has the paper on it and it's non-fusible. This is the best thing for um, any of these pieces that need placement and as well as the zipper. If you did my daybreak wallet, you definitely use that for, um, for that project as well. I've also grabbed my ruler and my rotary cutter. I have my zipper, my sharp scissors, and I have a marking tool. So on the back of this piece here, my A piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark over from each edge three and three quarter inches. But because I have this little weenie ruler, what I'm actually going to do is find my center and I'm just gonna make a little mark. You don't really need to know where the center is depending on what ruler you're using, but since I know where the center is, I'm just going to go a quarter of an inch to the right and a quarter of an inch to the left, like that, and make my marks. Now I have a half inch wide um, marking in the center, and then I'm gonna measure over a half inch from each end, like this. And I'm using a chalk pencil because I'm on the black backing, uh, but you can do this with a pen. You can do this with really anything that you would like. So now that I have that marked out, I'm going to cut this opening. You can cut the entire thing with scissors, but I find that if I do most of it with my rotary cutter, it's a lot smoother and it looks nicer. So what I'm going to do here is just cut. I'm not going to go all the way to the corner because I don't want to overcut. And I'm just going to cut like that and then I come down to the end here and I actually just kind of push it down I'm not moving it back and forth if that makes sense now I'm going to take my scissors because I'm almost cut and I'm just going to go back in and finish that up and there we go so is it perfect no but it's good enough and the way that it sits on the top I'm not super concerned clean that up a little bit Okay, looks good from this side, I'm happy. So I'm gonna take my tape now and just put a couple of pieces on either of the long side, just like that, really push that down. It's a really great tape, 
but sometimes the paper doesn't want to come up, so you kind of have to force it down. There go. And sometimes I'll even use my scissors just to really push that down. Now, peel up just the paper. Like that. Okay, I'm gonna take my zipper, and this is a four inch zipper, so I'm just gonna place that right side up, put my pocket piece on top, try to get that lined up. Well, that's not very nice, there we go. Try to get this a little bit straighter. And once it's down, I can just push it with my fingers. I've got a little overhang on each end, which is fine. You can always go with a longer zipper if you want to and trim it down afterwards, but this is awesome for all of your scraps. I don't know about you, but I always save my zipper scraps and then I don't know what to do with these tiny little pieces, and now I have something. So I'm gonna take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch all the way around the zipper, um, about an eighth of an inch or so. I have a um, purse zipper, so this has a little bit wider tape, so if I go a little bit wider than an eighth, that's fine. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll come right I've gone ahead and stitched my zipper in place. I so next up, we're going to work on our B and C pieces to make the front pocket right here. So B is going to be in the front where you have your plastic, and C is this back piece right here, which makes it enclosed so that you have an extra pocket. So um, I mentioned earlier that I like to use this 16 gauge plastic for my ID um, part. I found that I was trying some of the thinner ones and they just didn't feel quite as substantial to me. It kind of felt cheap um, and a little bit flimsy and I wanted something that was going to be substantial enough that I would feel confident giving this as a gift or selling it. You know, having something that really makes a nice finishing touch. So this is the Biani 16 gauge. We do sell this on the website and if you ordered a kit, it would be included in that but I just really like this for this project. It has paper on the back, which I'm going to leave on for just a couple more steps. So let me move this over, and we don't need C just yet. We're gonna work on B. So B is your larger piece. B is four and a half inches across by three and a quarter high. And I'm gonna grab my ruler and my chalk pencil and go ahead and just mark a half an inch from each of these edges. And that's where we're going to cut to make the window. So very much like I did on the zippered part, I'm gonna mark and then I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I'm gonna do my trimming, not quite to the corners. I'll finish those up with scissors. That way I don't overcut. So I don't wanna have any little tears and nicks in the corners. So I'm just gonna turn that. And I'll go ahead and finish this up with scissors. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut out the window portion. I'm gonna grab my tape that I had used earlier on the zipper. If you would prefer not to use this, you can skip it, but I figured I already have it, so I might as well. And I'm just going to place some tape all the way around the window. Once my tape is firmly placed here, I'm gonna go ahead and peel that off like that. So you can use clips for this if you would prefer, but I just think this is a lot easier and it just kind of keeps everything in place because you don't want your plastic shifting. My tape doesn't even wanna stick. There we go. Come on. All right, so once that's done, I'm going to grab the plastic here. So I have the shiny side that's gonna face down. This is the paper and I'm gonna leave the paper on and I'll tell you why in just a second. So I'm just gonna kinda of eyeball this. It's slightly smaller, it doesn't go all the way to the edge. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's covering the entire opening and I'm just gonna smooth that out. So now I have my B with my plastic window and I have my C piece. I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine and do a little bit of top stitching before I start to assemble these pieces. So on C, which is the back, I'm just gonna top stitch right along this top edge. I forgot to on this one and it's fine, it's not the end of the world, but I kinda wish that I had just done a little bit of stitching right there. I think it looks nice and finished. And then on B, 
I'm going to top stitch also this top edge and I'm going to top stitch just the top edge of the window. The reason for that, when you look at this finished unit right here, this is open because we have to have a place to put our ID. This is going to be the only opportunity I have to top stitch. If I stitch it after I've added the back piece, I'm gonna close it in and I can't use the window. So I'm going to stitch again, top of this one right here on C, top and then right here, top of the window on B and I'll be right back. So I've got both of my pieces all set. So here is my C, I just did that one edge of top stitching. I don't need to do anything else. And here is B and I, I saved the paper. I left it on for sewing because when I'm sewing with this down here, it's not gonna stick to my feed dog. So it just makes it a lot easier. Um, that's a nice little thread nest. But anyway, um, if I take that off too soon, it's going to stick and it's just going to it's going to mean that I have to make more um, you know adjustments to my machine so what I do is after I do my top stitching and you may or may not catch it with the top it doesn't matter but after I do that top stitching then I'm going to take this off because I don't need it anymore to finish up so now I have my window all set and I'm going to now place this on top of C so I'm going to line up the top edges both of the top stitched parts and if I turn this over, you'll see that again, C is shorter. C is about a quarter of an inch shorter on either side and about a quarter on the bottom. And I grab a couple clips and just keep that lined up right there. Now I can take this back to the machine and do the rest of the stitching around the window. So I'm going to sew this side, the bottom, and this side right here, also with an eighth of an inch. These outside edges are not gonna get stitched until we add it to the zippered part, but that's going to make this little pocket right here where our ID is gonna fit perfectly. So I'm gonna take this to the machine, eighth of an inch, side, bottom, and side. Do not sew the top again, it won't work. So I finished up stitching. I did the side, the bottom, and the side, all with an eighth of an inch seam. So that is going to make the little window and it makes it nice and tight so I can take my ID and put that in there and I'm not afraid of it coming out. It's gonna stay right in there nice and snug. So that's gonna fit any of your standard driver's license or passport cards. Now that that part is done, we will finish up the rest of the stitching on this in a later step, but now I have this pocket and I can set this aside. Again, you'll see on the back that my plastic sticks out a little bit. I can trim that if I want to, it's not a big deal. And the C piece is short. That's going to eliminate a lot of the bulk when we get to the finishing steps. When you look at the wallet here, there's no more than three layers of cork that you'll need to sew through to finish this up except if you add on any of these options, but it's just a little bit, you know, a half inch and three quarters of an inch. I find that by just doing a few layers of cork, I know that my domestic will get through it and your domestic should not have any problems. I didn't want to keep adding layers and layers that was going to make it difficult. So now that this is done, I'm gonna put it with the zippered pocket and we're gonna go ahead and work on the credit card pockets. So next step is going to be the card pockets. So that is, using piece D, which is right back here, that makes the base of this pocket, and our two E pieces. First things first, more top stitching. I'm going to take my E pieces over and I'm gonna top stitch one of each of the shorter sides. So when this is assembled, they're going to sit like that. So I wanna do the shorter side and I just need to do the top edge of both of these, so I'll be right back. My E pieces are top stitched, they're each stitch an eighth of an inch from one of the shorter ends, so that's gonna be my top edge. Now I have my base here, which is my D. D is four inches by two and three quarters. E's are two and three quarters by three. So the first thing I'm going to do is, again, grab my tape, because it just makes it so much easier. On the back of the E pieces, on the opposite side of where I've top stitched, I'm going to add a little bit. Right, add that tape on there. And first card pocket is going to be So I added my tape to the bottom edges, so they are top stitched here and here. I added the tape on the opposite ends. I'm going to place my first pocket a half inch from the bottom. So I'm just going to use my ruler and place that right there. 
I'm gonna take this to the machine and stitch a quarter of an inch across this edge. This is the only place that I stitch a quarter of an inch, so I will probably use the same foot and do two eighth inch stitches because then I don't have to change it. So the first one is stitched a quarter of an inch. I do have two stitching lines because I didn't change my foot. That's the only place I need to do a quarter, so I just left it on. So I'm going to place the last card pocket, the second E, right on here, just aligning it right along that bottom edge. My top stitch edges are facing towards each other. And the last thing I'm going to do is stitch an eighth of an inch right across this top edge. That's going to finish off the stitching right here, that's gonna make this as one complete unit. And then when I sew it to the base, I will go around an eighth of an inch and so that's going to complete that stitching. So again, just an eighth of an inch across this top edge. So I went ahead and I finished up my card pocket. I just top stitched this top edge an eighth of an inch. The rest of it will get finished when it's added to the wallet. Before I add this in and go on to the assembly steps, I'm going to do the optional um, snap closure right here and show you how to do that. And also the swivel hook if you are not adding either of those you can go ahead and skip forward to the end so I'm gonna grab my rivet setter and all of the things I need to add my snap for the snap tab I've grabbed my two F pieces these are three quarters of an inch by three inches I'm going to place them right sides together like this and top stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around and then I'll be ready to add my snap I stitched my little tab, I just did an eighth of an inch around and then I trimmed um, any spots that I didn't really like. You can do whatever you would like on the end if you want to round it or add some like little angled corners or you can just leave it, whatever makes you happy. So I have this piece done right now and I'm going to add to the closure part the cap, which is right here, and also the socket. So those are the two pieces that are going to go onto here and I have my matching dies Oops, right here. So I am using my Gold Star Rivet Press. I do also have a cam snap. Um, this is the one I'm using today. Everything was kind of already set up for me, so I'm just gonna go ahead with that. If you would like to do something like this on your wallet um, and you have a rivet press, make sure that you have the correct dies and a snap like this. They do make all sorts of snaps, so there's really a lot of options. These are the ones that I just happen to use. So in the bottom, I'm going to place this die like that. And in the top, I'm going to place this one that kind of has this little bubble in the middle. They're all made to go with the particular halves that you're using. So you wanna make sure that you have the correct halves and get everything lined up. Um, it's always good to practice if you're new to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you with this laying down and then I'll have to stand it up to use it. But what I'm gonna do here is on this end, so this end is kind of like the not so great one. That's the one that I'll sew into a seam. This is my more finished um, end that I really like. That's why I go all the way around so I can decide which end I want. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to mark in the center from that end a half an inch. So I'm just gonna use my ruler here to measure a half inch in. And I'm just gonna make a little dot, kind of eyeball it where I think the center is. I'm using a red pen because I'm hoping that it will kind of show up for you and me. Um, but just like that, that's where that's going to go. I'm going to take my um, Pro Master. I don't use the punches that come with the rivet setters. I like this one better. And I'm just going to put that on there. And before I click down, I'm kind of just looking, making sure it looks pretty centered. And when I use the Pro Master punch, I use setting 2.5. I find that that works really well for these snaps as well as rivets, so that's what I usually keep it on. I'm gonna take my cap. The cap is gonna be the part that shows on the outside, so if there's a side that I like better, I'll put it on that side. I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna turn this over, and I'm going to add the socket. And it always looks like you should turn it a different way than you should. You actually want it to kind of look like a little bowl. That's the way that you want it to sit on here. It, I think your brain says to flip it around, but that's how it should look. So it kind of looks like a little bowl, and then there is the um, cap. So what I'll do is put this right in here. The cap sits nice and snug there, and then I can pull this down. And the little divot that's right here, this little bump in the middle, that is to push that post down to flatten it out. So let me stand this up, it's gonna be much easier. Sorry, there's no good camera angle for doing this. So I'm gonna set that right there, and just hold that for a second, and give it a good push. 
and there it is. So I'll turn this over so we can see the next part. So there is half number one. So that is all set to go. I'm gonna set this aside for just a second and I'm going to grab that little scrap I had talked about earlier and my card pockets. And what I've already done on here is I found my center this way on pocket number one and I measured down three quarters of an inch. I'm going to again make the same hole I'm going to take this little scrap of cork and just kind of place it back there. I'm not adhering it or doing anything. I'm just kind of holding it in place. That way I have a little extra thickness and I'm going to punch right through both of those. So I'm only going through the front card pocket. That's it. All the little dots are bumping out. So now I'm going to grab my post and my stud. Now you may notice that my post is gunmetal and my stud is silver, and I will tell you why. The silver snaps that I have in the correct size are actually double cap. I didn't realize that when I ordered it. So on the back, because I wasn't paying attention, would actually be this piece. So that is made so that when you see both sides, you'll have a finished cap on both sides. I don't have the correct die for this, so if I tried to put this in the other parts of this die, it would ruin that. So instead, what I do is I just grab a different color, because that's okay, and I'm just gonna use this, so no one's gonna see it, and I'm gonna put this back here, like that. So that's where your, um, your post goes. No one's gonna see that part. And I'm going to take my snap part right here, my stud, and that's gonna sit right on top, okay? These are the same size, they're just, one's a single cap and one's a double cap, so that's why I can interchange those. I'm gonna switch this out real quick. And I have my other half of the die set. And you see I have it marked with a Sharpie. It's just to make it easier so I know that those always go together. Um, because this looks similar enough to the other piece that sometimes I get confused which one I want. Where this I know the difference because it has that little um, kind of nub right there. So that's gonna go right in there. That is gonna go here. And a little tip, I've talked about this before, whenever I'm tightening in this part, I never over tighten. I just kind of, in, when it stops, I stop turning it because if you over tighten the screw part, it can be really, really hard to get out and you don't wanna ruin your setter or your die. So this setter right here looks very, very similar to the one we used on the first half, except it has this rubber ring around it. That is going to protect this piece right here from getting squished down because if it's smushed, it's not going to work. So I'm just gonna open this up, put this right on here. And so it just sits right on that little nub. Get that right where I need it. It fits perfectly on the top and give it a good push. And I'm all set. So now I have my two pieces ready to go, ready to put in the wallet. And I wanted to show you something else. Um, since I was mentioning that I used a different color for the post because I didn't have the right um, snaps, I have all of them in a big box together so they're all the same size. I had purchased on Etsy these little rainbow colored ones, except they are just slightly off enough that they don't fit in my dies, but the cap works really well. So I use some silver pieces to finish up this and got just kind of mixed and matched. There is gunmetal on the back here, silver where it's showing, but where it really counts is the rainbow. So you can always work around what you have to make it work for you. So those two pieces are done. This is now ready to assemble in my wallet. Just in case you were wondering why did I do this in the order I did it, instead of having this snap first and then worrying about top stitching and sewing, I know that I'm not in the way of my foot. Um, I can do all of my sewing and then add that, so that's why I like to do it that way. This is all set. The last optional piece that you have is going to be this little piece right here, which is G. It's a half inch wide by three inches long or longer or shorter. That's just the, the size I picked. And my swivel hook, all I'm gonna do is loop that through. I can stitch, I can add a rivet, I can do whatever I want. That's just going to make this little tab and I'm gonna add that into my wallet when it's time to assemble. So what I'm gonna do for now is add, I think a little rivet here just to make it look pretty. So let me go ahead and grab those pieces as well. So I grabbed my die set for my rivets. Um, again, totally optional, you can sew this or skip this all together. So I'm just gonna fold these together just like that, line up the ends. 
I'm just going to eyeball this entire thing. I'm going to use my Pro Master and just put a hole. I didn't do any top stitching on this piece. Um, you can. I just decided not to. I'm going to put my rivet through here. So I just have a double cap since you are going to see the rivet on both sides and pop that together. And I have my two pieces here, so let me go ahead and, sorry, I hit the camera, and take those out. I always keep everything together labeled in a bag so that I know where it is next time I need it. So when you're looking at these two pieces, um, what should happen is when you put your rivet in here, it should sit nicely in the rubber, not come out. You don't want it, you know, shifting around. And as far as this piece, it should sit without enough room to tip over. That's how you know that you have the correct size. Every manufacturer does it a little bit differently. Some of them have you go slightly larger with your dies. Just follow whatever manufacturer um, you have and what they say for yours. So I've got my two pieces in. Stand this up. Get my rivet in there. And pull the lever. And there we go, all done. So let me get this out of the way. So that is all set. So now I have all of my pieces ready. I've got my window here, my card pockets, my two optional pieces, and my zipper. So now I'm ready to start assembling. I'm gonna clean up my mess here and get everything ready to go. Okay, so I set aside my swivel hook and my tab. I don't need those just yet. I have my piece from earlier with the zipper. And again, I don't really think it matters what side you put your pieces on, um, so I wouldn't stress too much about it. I seem to keep putting my credit cards here and my ID part there, but again, I don't think that it matters. So I'm gonna get these ready to go to the sewing machine. We're gonna do a little bit of top stitching, and I find it much easier to do this now than to try to assemble the entire unit folded and get everything stitched. I would rather just stitch over the sewing I already did, if that makes sense. So this is the open part. That's gonna be facing towards the zipper. I am lining up the edge of the front here with the bottom of this long piece, using a few clips just to hold that in place. Over here for my credit cards, I have the finished edge again facing towards my zipper, and I'm gonna grab my ruler and just place this a half inch up from the bottom, and it should be about a quarter of an inch on each side. I'll just check that quick. Looks good. And good. Okay, so I'll grab a couple clips. And I'm just going to take this to the sewing machine. And I'm going to stitch on the card pockets down the side, across the bottom, and up. And on this, I'm gonna do the same thing. This is just lined up on the edge, so I'm gonna go around those three edges. When I'm done, we can add these two pieces and then we'll be ready to finish it up. My pockets are sewn in place. Again, they are open towards the zipper, so these edges are not sewn down. I stitched an eighth of an inch along these edges here and I did an eighth of an inch along the card pockets right there. So this is ready to go. If I want, I can close this up, just fold it in half and do my stitching if I am not doing these optional pieces. Since I am, I'll show you where I like to put those and how to add those on so they're nice and straight. So I'm gonna take my first piece right here, my snap, and I'm actually gonna snap it together because what I don't want is for this to be crooked. So what I do, I don't use a ruler or anything, I just use my eyes and I just get that straight right where I want it, flip this over, and I mark. I just mark on either side of where I want that to go. Now what I'm gonna do is unsnap, and I'm going to just place this about a quarter of an inch in, like so, in between those marks. If you want, you can use a little bit of tape, which I'm probably gonna do. So I'll just grab a little piece of tape here and put that right next to those marks. And then I can scoot this in about a quarter of an inch Make sure it's right in between those marks. And the snap, the open part should be facing up because when it's finished, I want it to look like that. Gotta make sure it works. So that's gonna go right here. 
And then I'm also gonna grab my swivel hook and I can put this really anywhere that I want it. I like to put it here where the card pockets are open. So if I'm holding my wallet up, I'm not holding my pockets upside down. So I usually put it on the same side as the snap. And for this one, again, I'm gonna grab a little piece of tape and I'm just going to kind of put it between the zipper and the card pockets. The placement of this one is not as important. Um, obviously, the snap has to line up. This one doesn't really have to align with anything. Get on there. There we go. So just use a little bit of tape. And I'll turn it over and see where I want it. That looks good, right at the top of the card pockets. So just scoot that in a little bit, about a quarter of an inch or so. Now that that is ready, I can do one of two things. I can use my tape right here to hold everything together or I can use clips. I'm gonna use clips for today, but don't be afraid to use the tape if you prefer. I'm gonna flip this over. And if I were using the tape, I would just put it kind of on half. You don't need it on both sides. And I'm going to fold this over and line up my bottom edges right here and if anything shifts you can always trim it when you're done it's not the end of the world okay we've got a little bit of wiggle room here line up my sides i used the four inch zipper as the pattern calls for so i didn't have to do any trimming if you use a longer zipper you might want to trim those ends right now i want to be able to really squish this so i can sew through it and I'll add a couple of clips so these pieces don't move. And I'm good to go. So now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine. I'm gonna do an eighth of an inch all the way around and my wallet will be all set. My Sydney ID wallet is all set. I finished my sewing. Um, a couple of things to note about that. When you're going around doing your outside stitching, again, um, I cut back as much of the thickness as I could to make it domestic friendly. However, what I find happens sometimes is it's not the thickness, but it can be sewing next to like the card pockets. I'm not going through them, but I'm next to it. And sometimes my foot gets a little bit iffy. Don't be afraid to try a different foot or even just turn your wallet in a different direction. Sometimes I find it easier with the window on top. Sometimes it wants the card pockets on top. You know, machines are finicky, so just kind of give it what it wants. Um, now that this is all set, if I want, I can go ahead and finish my edges with some edge coat or some fabric fusion. If I was gonna give this as a gift or sell it, I definitely would do that. Um, I don't really see a big need to do the rest of the edges, but if you want to, you can do that as you go. I would probably just finish these main parts. I've got my little snap hook right here. I've got my swivel in case I wanna hook that onto anything. It's all ready for my ID and for me to use it. So this one, as well as the rainbow chevron, have all of the options on it. I did skip the swivel hook on this one and I just made the little tab. And on this one, I didn't do any of the extra options. I just stuck with the cork and the zipper. So there's definitely a lot of different things that you can do when you're making yours. You can really customize it to whatever you would like. Maybe you don't want an ID window and you wanna do credit cards on both sides or vice versa. You can make these um, projects into anything that suits your needs. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. You can click the little notification bell. I do upload um, every Friday from Facebook and I try to do tutorials as often as I can. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments or you can send me an email. All of my information is linked in the info part up at the top of the video. Just hit that little expand arrow. Thank you for joining me. I hope that you will make some Sydneys yourself and I can't wait to see them. Bye.